down from his glory Ever living story My God and Savior came And Jesus was his name Born in a manger To his own a stranger A man of sorrows, tears and agony Flesh and blood, his substance He took the form of man And revealed the hidden plan Oh, glorious mystery the sacrifice of Calvary And now I know Thou art the great I Am Oh, how I love Him Shine my 
your hands to the Lord and give Him praise today. Do you love Him? If you'll stand with me today, Go to the word of the Lord. Thank you so much for worshiping from your heart today. I'd like to direct your attention first <clears throat> to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number one and verse number 27. So God created man verse 26 move up one verse and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion everyone say dominion let them have dominion over the fish of the sea everyone say fish over the fowl of the air say fowl over the cattle everyone say the cattle and over all the earth everyone say all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion second time everyone say have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth upon everything now let's go to psalms chapter number eight psalms chapter number eight and i will save the rest of my scriptures for the rest of the message but while we are still standing i'd like you to read this in concert with me and we are just reading the traditional king james version i like the the verbiage i like the, the potency of it. Psalms 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made it him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen yea and the beasts of the field the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas O lord our lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth i'm simply going to talk to you today <clears throat> establish the kingdom equals having dominion Establishing the kingdom equals having dominion. Would you lift your hands? Would you lift your voice? And would you pray with me? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. And we pray now that the living word will preach the written word, that you'll help me to speak as an oracle of the Lord for these next few minutes, and that you would ignite our souls, O God, with the power of your spirit. Release us, O God, from all of the all of the, the weights and the sin that does so easily beset us and help us to run with patience this race that's set before us. We bind every resisting spirit in Jesus' name. We pray your perfect will will be done. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Turn to three or four people and say, we were made for dominion. Just say that, we were made for dominion. And then you may be seated in the presence of God. When I consider the original design of man, I realize that this is 
a part of why we are the way we are. And by researching and by understanding where we have been, it helps us to know where we are going. David said, I was born in sin and I was shapen in iniquity. In, in sin did my mother conceive me. He's saying the struggles that I have are as a result of the fact of the condition that I was born with. I've heard a lot of people say, well, I was born this way. And you know, I can't necessarily disagree with you. There is a lot of things that are carried in our genetic code that are passed from generation to generation. There are certain weaknesses, certain tendencies, and you know, even the way that we look, the pigment of our skin, the, the, the aptitude of our personality, the certain kinds of gifts and talents, it's not all negative. There's a lot of good things. You know, I see in my, in my children a, a, a lot of intelligence, and I understand that, that my, my wife is very smart, but her father was a math genius. And he got scholarships and all kinds of amazing opportunities with his work because of his science and math skills. He worked for McDonnell Douglas and Boeing. And so in junior high, they saw that. And I see my, my son, Caleb, is multiplying numbers in his head, and he's not even been taught that. In kindergarten, I say, I know he didn't get that from me. I know he got that from, from Grandpa Lonnie. That's where he got that from, you know. So I'm thankful. There's some good things that are passed down. Let's not be all negative about our past. But, but when, we, when we consider certain things about our life, we, we realize that there are things that pull this way and that way on us. And how many of you have, have seen maybe a new baby and say, oh, he's got his grandpa's smile. Or you say, boy, he, you know, he's got, he's got his uncle's ears or, you know, whatever it is. And, the poor uncle lost his ears when that baby was born, you know. But, but you, you, you see those tendencies that, that come there, and, and, and we, we can have a little bit of fate in us that just kind of says, well, I am that way, and I can't help myself because that's how I'm genetically wired. And while there's a lot of truth to that in, in the beginning, we also understand that God made us with free will. And he made us with the capacity to change. He gave us a gift called repentance. Repentance is not a negative thing. Re repentance is, is an incredible gift that God gives to us. It's the power to change. As many as believed on him, the Bible says, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And when I read that verse, I realize that I can actually go past my past to the original design of man, to the very first son of God, which was Adam that did not have any sin. And there I see God's intent for my life. And that's why Jesus came into this world and he was called the last man, Adam because he came to reset man in his rightful place with God so that we can operate according to that divine design. Is there anything in you that says, I feel like I was made for more. I, was, I feel like I was created to, to, to have a better life than the life that I'm living right now. Obviously, we want to go to heaven. I want to be saved. But salvation does more than just give me a ticket to heaven. Salvation transforms my life. The Bible says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In other words, that you can have the life that you were made to have. And so just as you can say, well, there's sin in my nature, you can also say there's dominion in my design. Everyone said, well, that's so human. We have, we have said that. It's so human. It's so human of us. To err is human. A, 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 a classic maxim. But to forgive is divine. So we often just put humanity in this, in this state of fallenness or weakness that he finds himself at now. And we think that almost God made us that way. But God did not make us that way. God made us in his likeness, and he made us in his image. He said, I want you to be like me. I'll rule in the heavens, you rule in the earth. I'm going to give you dominion. Everyone say dominion. 
Man's first breath was that of breathing in the life of God, and he became a living soul. And God said, I made you to be like me. And I'm going to give you the capacity to understand this earth. Think about this. Think about the capacity that Adam had. God gave him dominion over the fowls of the air, and yet he cannot fly. He gave him dominion over the fish in the sea, and yet he cannot go to the depths of the ocean. He cannot hold his breath that long. He gave him mastery over beasts that were 20 tons in weight. He had mastery over all of the animals. They were stronger, they were, they were faster, they were bigger, and yet he had dominion over them. The Bible says he also had dominion over the tiny things, all the creeping things that are on the earth, every little ant and every little spider and every little beetle. He had dominion over all of them, and yet how do you have dominion over something you can't crawl down in its hole and tell them, oh, stop it. You get to burrow over there. You don't get to burrow over here. Okay, queen, queen of the ants, you have to move now. Yes, sir. <laughs> and she takes all of the ants and moves over here because he wants her. How do you do that? How do you keep track of the entire world? As one man, he was able to know all of it at the same time. Everyone say at the same time. Now, I have been... I have been praying for my brain for a long time. I realized early on that I needed help, okay? When I was in school, I was like, I can't remember that. I need, I need the spelling word. What, what, how do you say? And I, so I started praying. I said, God, you, can, you made this brain. Can you help it? <laughs> I need extra memory. Can you just install some extra memory in there? And I'll tell you, I have been praying for upgrades ever since. I started studying the brain. What they found is that they say that Einstein used about 7% of his uh, possible brain capacity. They said average human beings only use between 1% and 2% of their potential brain power. 1% to 2%. And I'm going, my goodness, that means 98% of our brains are being wasted. 93% if you're, in the, if you're in the field of genius like Einstein was. 93 percent i'm like god is there some thing that you can do to unlock some of that god i'm praying about that god just i need it now i begin to ask the question what is this other 90 percent other 95 percent that they say we have the capacity for but we never use i believe that this is a reflection of how we were designed in the beginning is that when man partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil he cut off his connection with God and he had to leave that garden he lost his place he fell from the glory and so as a result he lives now in a natural world where there is only what you can see or hear or taste or touch uh, and and so our five senses or or taste our five senses are what define to us what we call real but we know that there is so much fo more beyond what we're able to even see they're telling us that even what our ears are able to hear, the amount of sound that is actually in the universe is so vast that if you would spread, if you would spread it from a, a, a measuring stick from San Diego to Seattle uh, on the West Coast, you, you might be able to hear uh, about a mile worth of the sound that is available to us. Dogs can hear high pitches that we cannot hear. Cats hear things that we can't hear. They see things that we can't see. They, they know that under microscopes and, and under certain kind of vectors they, that, that there's ultraviolets and ultra reds and ultra yellows that we cannot see. They're, they're in a dimension beyond what our eyes. Does that mean that they don't exist? No, they exist. We just cannot see them. And so that also tells us that there is another realm beyond where the natural man finds himself right now. The 
Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned. We have to engage another part of ourselves. Sin created a latency. It killed our spiritual existence so that all we have is a human existence. But this other 90%, that's for the spirit world. That's for the kingdom God. That is the reflection of how Adam could handle managing the entire world all by himself is because God said, there's a capacity that I built you with that when you and I work together, something happens. You connect to my mind. You connect to my omniscience. You connect to my omnipresence. And you connect to my power and dominion. And so when I say you're going to be like me, that means I'm going to give you access to the way that I operate, to the way that I think, and to the way that I live. I'm going to give you access to my spirit. And through my spirit and through my mind, you will then begin to execute my kingdom and have the dominion. This is how God made us from the very beginning. That's the reason why he got man involved in the creation process. He said, I want you to come and stand by me because you are more like me than you are like the animals. I want you to name the animals because I want you to feel what it feels like to be creator even though you are still a creation. I'm going to live in you. My thoughts are going to be in your mind. And so when he would bring an animal, he would ask him, what's his name? And he would think for a moment and when he would think God's thought would go into the man's mind and he would immediately know exactly everything he needed to know. And so what God is trying to tell us is that the last man, Adam, came to restore the dominion that was lost when man fell. So today we are here to reestablish our divine design in everyone's life. That's why our theme is establish the kingdom because you were made for more than just the limited existence that carnal thinking has for you. Now we have a battle, not of just two wills, but of two natures and two minds. Man in the beginning only had one mind. Everything was integrated. A tree could have a spiritual result. What he physically ate affected his spiritual man. Now, you see, Satan, when he fell, he saw this man. He could not get at God, but he saw the way God loved this man and made him in his image, and he heard what he said about him. And so he said, I cannot get at God, but I'll get at the thing that God loves. I'll get him to do the same thing that I did. I'll get him to raise himself up as a God because I did that, and God got angry. So I can get God angry at whoever I want to now because I know which button to push in God. So I'll get that man to do the same thing. He knows if he eat of that tree, he'll be a god. Guess what? He was already designed to be like God. He was already God kind. That's the reason why Mary could give birth to Jesus. Why God could be manifest in flesh is because we are a part of the same species with God. <laughs> Let that sink in just for a minute. So Satan saw this, and he was angry. And he said, I'm going to get God's judgment to fall upon him. So judgment comes upon, uh, upon that man, but, but there's judgment with mercy. And they had never seen mercy before. When, when, when Lucifer fell, notice now, he lost his first estate and could never go back. Everyone say he could never go back. The reason why there's a hell is because there's a devil that's going there. It was created, hell was created for the devil and his angels. He is held in chains of darkness right now. That's why when Jesus came and cast the devils out, have you come to torment us before the time? They know their time is coming. The devil knows his time is coming. Touch your neighbor and say, the devil knows he's defeated. He knows it. You've just got to figure that out, and you've just got to walk in that dominion that God has given to you. That's what I'm here to help you with today. Hallelujah. So he lost his state. He could not go back. So when man fell, he wanted to get man to eat of the tree of life. Because if he eats of the tree of life in his fallen state, he becomes eternally fallen. And his state can never be altered. And so the reason why God sends him out of the garden is because he does not want him to eat of the tree of life before he's been redeemed. 
God is showing us that even in our fallen state, Satan wants to make it permanent, but he wants to make it temporary. So whatever condition that you're in right now, even if you feel like you're out of control with your life, if you feel like you're under and not over, if you feel like you're lost, if you feel like you're confused, if you're depressed, if you've been battling the same thing over and over and over again, hell keeps telling you that's the way you are. You were born that way. You cannot help yourself. It's always going to be like that. He wants you to think it's permanent. It's I'm stuck. I can't get past this. But if you go back to the beginning, you realize that hell's plan for you was to make it permanent but heaven's design was it's just temporary he'll be back he'll be back again he'll get the dominion back i'll restore him back to his place it's not over there's going to be one born of a woman that's going to crush your head it'll bruise his heel but that'll be the end of you satan hallelujah And that's the reason why Jesus came down from his glory. That's why he came to be the ever-living story. That's why he took the form of man and revealed the hidden plan. That's why it's the glorious mystery that was now sacrificed of Calvary. Hallelujah. How many know he's the great I am? He's the one that's from, from everlasting to everlasting. And he came to be like us so we could be like him. Oh, my God. Everybody say dominion. 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 You were designed to dominate your environment. You're made for that. That's what he wants. I got the Holy Ghost at an early age. I got the Holy Ghost when I was five. And when the Holy Ghost came into my life at an early age, I felt the difference. I could feel it on the playground when I went to school. I could feel it walking through the halls. And I was a sort of shy kid. I wasn't really uh, that verbose. I know it's hard for you to believe that now, but it's true. As I got a little older, I developed a little bit of a speech impediment. And and I had to work at it to speak sometimes. But there was something in me. My little neighbor boy had a basketball goal. And that poor kid, I beat him every time. I did poor guy I started, I started saying maybe we should find somebody else and you and I can team up and play you know against them we were trying to find some, was only one kid on the block and I just kept beating him every every day it was like he was getting coming coming back for his beating again you know I started feeling bad so we started going down to the going down to the park and and I, I just found myself just we played basketball we played baseball I, I just kept having this I'm, I'm supposed to win I'm gonna win I just felt that. And and as I got older, people started seeing that as pride, and they started smashing me down and telling me I didn't need to talk like that. And and then I started getting developing this other insecurity or fear or apprehension or second guessing myself. And I would be nervous. And I was trying to push down this thing because everybody told me that that was pride. But I had to understand wait a minute, this was too young in my life for it to be pride. I didn't even have enough self awareness to know that I was thinking that it was me. I, I had the Holy Ghost. I had the power of God in my life and what I realize now is that God it wasn't that I had such great talent I'm not that tall I'm not that fast it was that something in me there was something in me that was designed to walk into every environment and believe that I could win and so what I want to tell somebody here today is that God made you to win God designed you to win greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world I want to wake up the warrior in you I want to wake up the fight in you I want to wake up the the Holy Ghost in inside of you I want you to get up and say you know what I've been in this depression long enough hell you don't have the right to hold me any longer I've been in this fear and intimidation long enough you know what I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna win I was designed to step on you something in me is greater than you The Bible says that that, that Jesus was going to bruise, he's going to crush the head of the serpent. And if I have his DNA now, if I have been born of the water and born of the spirit, then I am in a new bloodline. I am in the bloodline of the last man, Adam, not the first man, Adam. That means I act like my daddy now because I got my daddy's name. I got my daddy's blood. I got my daddy's spirit. And now I've got his DNA and his, his DNA says I win every time.
I'm looking at a bunch of winners. I know you may have lost some battles, but you haven't lost the war. I'm looking at a bunch of people. You might have been knocked down, but you didn't get knocked out. You can get back up and say, rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. We are establishing the kingdom because God is working in us. He's working through us. It is the power of God in our lives. It is an everyday victory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let me go four more minutes. Hallelujah. When Jesus came, let, let, let's talk about this a minute. When Jesus came, what was Satan's challenge? He goes into the wilderness. We're going to talk about 40 days of prayer and fasting. Jesus did 40 days in prayer and fasting. Before every great transition, there's always prayer and fasting. Before you go to the next level, it's always prayer and fasting. There are no great, lasting, culture-changing, earth-shaking revivals without prayer and fasting. It, it, it's the price because we have to wrestle the flesh down, break through the doubt, break through the carnality, break through this limiting thing that says it's only what I can see, feel, taste, and touch. To, to, to open up the, the, the capacity of the mind of God to begin to flow through us. That we're not a double-minded man anymore or double-minded woman anymore, but we have the mind of Christ. So I'm wrestling to get to that point where I have the mind of Christ actively working in me. Who has known the mind of God that he may instruct him? The Bible says, but we have the mind of Christ. So when I, when I have the mind of Christ and I use Christ as my example, we are Christ followers. That's what it means to be his disciples. That's what it means to be a Christian, a Christ follower. So when I look at Jesus and I see what he did when he was in that time of temptation, what did Satan say to him? He said, if you are the Son of God. Second time, if you are the Son of God. Third time, if you are the Son of God. So at each time, he is challenging his inner workings of who he is. He's questioning his identity. Are you sure you are who you say you are? If you are, then you better make stones and turn them into bread. And Jesus said, I don't have to prove myself to you. I don't have to respond to your question as if it is valid. If I respond to your question to try to prove who I am, then I'm already disproving whom I am by having to say to you that I acknowledge the question is a valid question. So I'm not even going to answer your question. I'm just going to say it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All I'm going to do is just go back to the word and use the word because I don't have to, I do not even have to respond. This is what hell has been trying to do to us he's been saying oh yeah if you've got the dominion then how come this is in your life and how come that's in a, if you're the daughter of God if you're the son of God if you are who you say you are and all of a sudden we listen to that question and we process the question and we try to prove the question I'm gonna tell you it's not up for the devil to decide who you are it's not up to the devil to be able to question who you are you are who God says you are you are what the blood says you are you are what his name says that you are are you are what his spirit inside of you says that you are we are what the word says I am what the Bible says that I am I have what it says I have and I can do what it says I can do establishing the kingdom equals having dominion. When we talk about being the church that's built upon the rock that the gates of hell shall not prevail against, that we can bind and we can loose. And we are to have the keys of the kingdom so that we can establish the kingdom of God. It means that we get 
our revenge. <laughs> that we take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us. The, the, see, the devil tricked that early man into giving him the contract and giving him the power. He said to Jesus, I can give you all the kingdoms of this earth for they've been delivered into my hand. And Jesus did not contest with him. He did not say, no, that's not true. He said, fall down and worship me and I will give these kingdoms to you. And he said, it's written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Notice what he says, he's your God. Thou shalt worship, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. I don't want you to forget, devil, that he's still God regardless of, of how you deceived man or taken away this kingdom. And I'm here to take it all back because you know what he said before the great, commi before the great commission? All authority is given to me both in heaven and the earth. Now go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, I've got it all now, which none of the princes of this world knew. If they would have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But can I tell you, the devil is defeated at the cross, and he does not control the kingdoms of this earth anymore. That's why we are saying the kingdom of God is at hand, and the church has the keys of the kingdom. We establish it in the earth. We can turn things upside down if we will only stand up and reach our fullest potential. Would you stand right now across this building? Praise God. Would you clap your hands one more time to the Lord if you feel faith in your spirit? So I want to, I want to pray a couple of prayers with you while you're standing in your seat, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to come forward. But the two prayers that I would like to pray, I would like to pray a binding and a loosing together. I would like us to collectively bind the effects that our recent history and our recent genetics and our recent generations have had upon us. The way we think, the way we emotionally respond, the way we make our decisions, how we live our life. And I'd like to say, I'm going to cancel that. I'd like to cancel it. Anything that you'd like to cancel from your history, that you'd like to say, I love you mom and I love you dad and this is nothing against you at all, but you know what? I'm gonna take a step a little bit further this way with God. My, dad, my dad's a preacher, but there's some mentalities that he still carries around that, that he told me. He said, son, he said, I, I want you to go beyond me and there's some things that I've wrestled with that I don't want you to have to wrestle with. And he gave me permission to say, you know what, Jesus is my ultimate influence in my life and I, I can go beyond. It doesn't mean that, that we're disrespecting the past. It means that we are honoring in the best way possible because every generation wants the next generation to be better than themselves. And so what we are doing is we're saying by the blood of Jesus today, I am canceling all of the bad history in my life and all of the sins and tendencies that I have so that we can secondly loose the dominion power of God into your thinking, into your attitude, into your behavior, into your decision making process and you will walk out of here saying I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. I am a winner. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is, this is powerful if you, will, if you will apply it to your life. I want you to connect with at least one person, someone comfortable, comfortable to you, next to you that you can agree with. But we're going to pray these prayers together in agreement. Are, are you ready? Father, by the authority of your word and by the power that's in the name of Jesus, we bind and cancel all of the negative influences. We thank you, God, for all of the gifts, for all of the potential, and for all the blessings that have already come to us. But Lord, any of the curses, any of the sins from the generations, anything that is in me that is not of you, I cancel it right now in Jesus' name. We bind its influence. We bind our past. And we say in Jesus' name, we are free. By the blood of Jesus, we are free. 
by the word of God we are free would you clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise and thank him for it now we're gonna seek we're gonna speak a second word and this is to awaken us to awaken the power of God the Bible says stir up the gift that's in you stir it up you've got a gift in you but you got to stir it up you've, you've got that boldness in you stir it up you've got potential in you stir it up you've got a warrior in you girls with some swords and some guys with some fight we've got it in us we're gonna win this thing I know we've been in a fight for a while but we're gonna win this we were designed to win we were made to win I am here to authorize you to go out into the fight and win Right, I want you to agree with somebody one more time. We're going to pray the prayer of faith a second time. Father, now we loose the warrior. We loose the victory. We loose the power of the Holy Ghost inside of every believer, inside of every disciple that is here today. I release your anointing to destroy yokes, to break chains, to open prisons. Oh God, to unlock doors. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I release the healing power, the deliverance power, the power of evangelism, and the power of transformation. But I speak inside of every believer that you would rewire us, Lord, with dominion. Give us a mindset of victory. <laughs> Woo. Let us feel your authority right now. <laughs> Let it already be decided, Lord, that in every environment we walk into, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above and not beneath, that we are your sons and daughters, that you are living and operating and working in us, and that we have the victory. Say, I loose it in Jesus' name. I release the full measure of God's grace into your life. Now clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise all over this building in Jesus' name. All right. All right. Here, here's my altar call, and you can come whenever you like for this. But I want it to be two things. If you are here today and you say, I have been bumping up against something that I've been ready to break through. It's like I'm coming up against the same wall, the same thing, but I feel that God is ready to help me break through it. I want you to come and stand. If you're ready for that breakthrough, you're ready to go to that next level. You feel that in your soul. And then maybe you're seeing somebody, this is the second part, maybe you're seeing somebody here that says, I'd like to have a breakthrough. And maybe you're saying, I feel a lot of victory in my soul. I'd like to go pray for somebody. I'd like you to find somebody, and I'd like you to agree with them. But if you're here saying, I need a breakthrough, there is a breakthrough in the house for you today. There is a victory that is here in the house for you today. If you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God can fill you with it today. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, you can, you can connect to the bloodline of Jesus. You can connect to the bloodline of Jesus through obeying, through obeying the gospel today and being baptized in the name of Jesus. But you're here today for a breakthrough. Come on, that's right, lift your hands now. We're speaking in agreement today, Father. We come to you in Jesus' name. God, I speak that the doors, the doors, oh God, will open. The walls will break. The ceiling will break. Oh God, we will go up into that new place. We will go up into that new dimension. We will enter into that favor. We will walk in that dominion in Jesus' name. After all that we have been through, after all that God has helped us to overcome, today is a day of promise. Today is a day of breakthrough. If you're on Facebook and you're watching right now in the name of Jesus, I release a breakthrough into your life. I release a breakthrough into your home. I release right into your car while you're holding your phone, wherever you're sitting in a chair somewhere. In the name of Jesus. I set you free.
God is going to shape you. God is going to shape you. He's going to redefine you. He's going to give you a fresh identity. A brand new identity in Christ.